Hello and welcome to Daily News Videos. In this video, we look into controversies around Aligarh Muslim University, a beacon of learning and a symbol of cultural heritage. Yet, beneath its illustrious facade lies a legal battle that has spanned over five decades, questioning its very identity as a minority institution. Before delving into the intricacies of the dispute, let's understand what defines a minority educational institution. These institutions, often rooted in specific religious or linguistic communities, are entrusted with preserving cultural identities while imparting knowledge. Consider a college initiated by a Christian missionary organization or a school managed by a Sikh community. Despite adhering to general educational regulations, they retain their minority status, fostering a unique blend of secular and cultural education. At the heart of this debate lies Article 30 of the Indian Constitution, a safeguard for minority rights in education. This constitutional provision grants minorities the autonomy to establish and administer educational institutions, ensuring the preservation of their cultural and linguistic identities. The story of the Aligarh Muslim University traces back to 1877, when Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan envisioned a modern institution preserving Islamic traditions. From its humble beginnings as the Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College, it evolved into AMU, formalized by the Aligarh Muslim University Act of 1920. However, the journey towards defining AMU's minority status encountered hurdles, igniting a legal battle in 1967 with the S. Aziz Basha case. Amendments to the MU Act raised questions about the institution's Muslim character, sparking debates that echoed through courtrooms for decades. The crux of the dispute lies in contrasting perspectives. Advocates supporting AMU's minority status cite precedents like the TMA Pi Foundation case to argue that statutory regulations or state aid do not negate an institution's minority character. They assert that AMU's establishment by the Muslim community distinguishes it from mere incorporation by legislative acts. In contrast, opponents of AMU's minority status contend that the institution relinquished its Muslim character with the 1920 Act and subsequent amendments. They argue that AMU's secularization and its historical ties with the British government negate its claim to minority status. As the legal saga unfolds, a pivotal moment arises with the referral of the case to a seven-judge bench in 2019, led by Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, esteemed justices deliberate on clarifying the constitutional protections afforded to minority educational institutions. The Supreme Court's verdict holds profound implications, not just for AMU, but for minority institutions across India. It will set a precedent on the interpretation of Article 31 and redefine the parameters for determining minority status, reshaping the landscape of educational governance. In conclusion, the dispute over AMU's minority status epitomizes the delicate balance between constitutional rights and historical legacies. As the Supreme Court navigates these complexities, it must uphold the principles of equality, religious freedom and educational autonomy. Ultimately, the resolution of this long-standing dispute will not only define the trajectory of minority rights and educational governance, but also reaffirm India's commitment to democracy and pluralism. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more updates. Thanks for joining us.